Is it unreasonable to say gas, which expands in all directions? Is weightless? I'm pretty sure that's a reasonable thing to suppose. Hi and welcome. It's my great pleasure today to present to you Mr. Nathan Oakley and his news that... I can't say that. It's ridiculous. Hi, my deepest apologies. Unfortunately, you're going to have to listen to Nathan Oakley and his new idea of stupid. Gas has no weight. Oh dear. So Mr. Nathan Oakley, take it away and... Roll VT. Why is it to be weightless? Well, let's ask Simone Gert exhibiting gas-like behaviour. Very zen. Oh yes, very zen. Unfortunately, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to maintain my composure before I explode. Gas, which expands in all directions, and unless it collides with something, it just carries on moving in that direction, regardless if it's up, down, left, right. Pretty much like this chick. Chick? Oh, very respectful, Nathan. What do you think you are? God's gift to women? God's gift to turnips, more like. She's floating around, right? No, she's experienced a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 metres per second per second, Nathan. A bit like gas. And she's trying to achieve, what now? Oh yeah, weightlessness. Wrong. She's just achieving the feeling of weightlessness. Is it unreasonable to say gas, which expands in all directions, is weightless? Um, I'm going for... Yes. I'm pretty sure that's a reasonable thing to suppose. Because gas is weightless. It's moving around in all directions, not going down, go boom, boom at 9.8 metres per second squared. Au contraire, Princess Powerpuff. Everything on Earth is experiencing a downward acceleration of 9.8 metres per second per second. That's also easily demonstrable with a gas. Look at sulphur hexafluoride, which will happily sit in an open-topped aquarium. So I thought I'd make this video to assist Brian's logic. Well, personally, I would think it'd be more helpful for you to assist Brian's logic by demonstrating how to delete your own YouTube channel. In his attempt to explain to a lot of fundamentalist religious zealots with a globe belief that gas doesn't have weight in your paradigm. It is weightless. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. Okay, Nathan, let's try and spank your stupidity. Everything in this universe has mass, apart from photons, and perhaps Nathan's brain. What do you reckon? Well, I don't know anything about that, but I do know I like fluffy little kittens. Fair enough. So what is weight? Weight is mass times gravitational acceleration. So if you had a mass of one kilogram in the environment of Earth, with a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second, your weight would be 9.8 newtons. The thing is, that formula is for that mass while in free fall. The only reason that you can feel your weight is because of the resistance pushing against you, such as the floor underneath your feet or the chair underneath your butt. Let's conduct a quick thought experiment. Imagine for a moment that Mr. Nathan Oakley is stood at the top of the Burj Khalifa and that his mass is 100 kilograms. He's experiencing a downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. And so the weight that he feels through the soles of his feet is 980 newtons. Let's further suppose that for some unknown reason, someone decides to give him a good shove off of that building. Please, 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 please. As Nathan is falling, his mass is still unchanged. It's 100 kilograms. The gravitational acceleration hasn't changed. It's 9.8 meters per second per second. But for Nathan, he feels as though he's weightless. However, his weight has not changed because mass times acceleration gives you weight. Of course, this experiment won't last too long before Nathan meets the pavement. <coughs> Oh dear, and becomes very aware of his weight again. But Nathan told us that he felt weightless as he was hanging around in the air just like bricks don't. So where did that weight go? Well, nowhere really. It's part of the entire system. 
and it's just very, very difficult to measure. Take another example, a swimming pool. When you're in a swimming pool, you feel as though your weight is less, but that's not actually true because your mass is the same and so is the downward acceleration. But I can hear Nathan in a silly sort of high-pitched squeaking whine saying that's not true and that he could prove otherwise because if he put a set of scales on the floor of the swimming pool and stood on it, it wouldn't read 100 kilograms, which is true. However, that weight is still there. It's part of the entire system. It only feels as though your weight is lower. Supporting someone in water, it feels relatively easy. It appears as though they haven't got much weight, but in fact their mass and acceleration downwards is the same. The weight hasn't gone away, it's just part of the entire pool water system. Now I can show this with an experiment. I did actually check the fridge because I wanted to use some cheese for this. Unfortunately, there was none. Yesterday, Mrs. S and I celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary. Yay! Mrs. S, if you want to reach 30, you need to buck your ideas up, Milado. So let's imagine that this apple is Nathan. Any other piece of fruit or manky old vegetable will do. And we weigh it. And we get a weight of 117 grams. Next, we take a container with some water and place it on the scales. And once it's settled down, we zero it. Nathan shows us his graceful Tom Daly diving skills and jumps into the pool of water. He might feel as though he has lost some weight, but the weight is still there and the scales read 117 grams. So there you have it. The weight's still there, you're just not feeling it. Hello? Nathan? Yeah, I know it's not gas. You want gas? All right, I'll show you something with gas then. Don't ever call me again. Okay, this guy has taken a vacuum chamber, popped a lid on it. So it contains air at atmospheric pressure, 14.7 PSI. To be clear, the air inside that chamber is not compressed air. He's placed it on a set of scales and then he's going to evacuate it. Okay, seeing if a vacuum chamber weighs less with no air in it. It's now at 3,423 grams. So I'm going to zero it right here. Okay, it's now at zero grams, so we'll be able to tell if it goes into the negative now. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. You can easily tell. Look at it just start dropping in weight. I did not expect it to show up that vividly. Okay, so we're at a full vacuum now. And it stayed at minus 25 grams. So, Mr. Oakley, you now need to explain why those scales are reading 25 grams less when the only thing that has been taken away is the air that was inside that chamber. You plum. But hey, this is science. Let's put the air back in again and see what happens. Oh, minus 25 grams, I'm gonna open it. Three, two, one. Oh, there it goes. Wow, <laughs> back to zero grams. Well, Nathan, I'd say you've been categorically debunked. Not only have I shown you that gas has weight, with that vacuum chamber, I also showed that having the feeling of lower weight, like the apple in the water, doesn't mean the weight's gone away. You just need to measure it in the correct manner. Now, as for Simone Gertz, if you can devise a method to weigh that entire aircraft, the atmosphere inside it and the people inside it, then you'll find that its weight has not changed. She's only experiencing the feeling of weightlessness. What do you think, Scotty? I can't change the laws of physics. Until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.